right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from beautiful blue skied San Diego. And today I'm joined by Tony Morris, who's in North London in the UK. And equally blue skies there today, right? Absolutely. It's been glorious. I think about late 20s today. Oh, that's fantastic. And uh, Tony is the founder of the TMI Training Institute, international speaker and author of five books and acclaimed sales train over 26,000 professionals. And we're going to talk about everybody's favorite subject and everybody's favorite thing to do. We're going to talk about prospecting in the 21st century. (laughs) So, Tony, can I just start off? um, And this is whenever I talk about prospecting, I always kind of ask people this is, so everybody knows they need to do prospecting. But a lot of people spend an inordinate amount of time trying to persuade themselves that they don't have to or it doesn't work and it doesn't work anymore and all of that kind of stuff. What's your answer to that? I think people are scared, actually. I I think people find so many excuses of why not to do it. It it, it is a, I mean, I wouldn't even say it's a necessary evil. I'm, I'm one of the weirdos, John, that actually love prospecting. And I think I love it because... I understand how to articulate my value, how to differentiate myself to everyone else. And, um, and it's worked for me so many times. And when something works for you, you know, you love to do it. Um, and I think the truth is a lot of people have not been shown the right way. Mm-hmm. And, and most people don't like rejection. And most people don't like doing things they're not very good at. Um, so my, my really, what I teach and what I strongly recommend is learn from others that have done it very successfully. There's so many people out there, like we were talking about Jeb Blunt earlier. Yeah. You know, one of his, I mean, one of his books, um, Prospecting, uh, I can't remember, come to me, but he wrote an amazing prospecting book years ago that I loved, Fanatical Prospecting. Yeah, Fanatical um, Prospecting. You know, and, and there's so many great books out there, but they've got to, people have got to invest in themselves from so many experts out there and learn how to do it successfully. And I think it would have a big mind shift, actually, once they do it. Yeah, and there's a couple of things you said there that I just want to underline. Um, number one is, yes, if, if you don't have the skills to do it or if you go in with the mindset that this is going to be an awful experience, well, guess what? It's, it's going to be an awful experience. You're going, yeah. to, uh, you're going to actualize what you visualize, right? Um, but the other part I like is we're saying invest in yourself because so many people sit around waiting for their company or their boss to invest in them. And at the end of the day, the, the person who cares most about your career and your success is you. And as you say, there's no excuse now. There's so many resources out there. So what are some of the ways you would advise people how to, how to start um, maybe reorienting their thinking or mindset towards prospecting and then the skills, what skills to learn? Yeah, I, I think the first thing they need to understand is, well, there's a few things. I think the first thing is about rejection, this whole mm-hmm. idea about rejection that, you know, if they reject you, it's feedback. What it, what it means to me, if you've, if you've chosen the right target audience, and that's the first thing, who are you aiming at? You know, I, I, I call this, are you fishing in the right ponds? Because mm. so many people say, I work with everyone. Yeah. And, and then and my answer to that is, oh, so do four-year-old boys, are they your target audience? <laughs> and they go, well, of course not. Well, you don't work with everyone then. So no. really understand your niche. And once you understand that, why would they want to listen to you? What's, what are you, what's the pain you're solving for them? Or what, what goal are you helping them realize and, and achieve? And once you understand that, then you've got to look at how can I demonstrate that I can solve their problem or help them achieve their goal? And if you can back it up with a success story, it helps. Mm-hmm. But you, your company you work for or you own might not have a success story, but I bet you you've helped someone like them who've got a similar problem or are looking to achieve a similar goal. And as long as as you can articulate that in in a matter of seconds, then you should be excited to pick up the phone and share that success and talk about how you're going to help them do the same thing. So I think people really need to be very clear on who they're focusing on and why, what are their pains that they're helping them solve or the goals they're looking to uh, realize 
back it up with a success story. And if you don't achieve your goal, look at it as feedback. And, and when you put that phone call down, think to yourself, what could I have done differently to get a different outcome? Yeah, and I, there's, a, there's a few things there again, I just wanted to underline. Um, but I think what you just said about your target audience and all of that is, is that the critical uh, factor of preparation work, right? Doing the prep work. Yeah. Going, not just as you say, saying, oh, I'll go on LinkedIn and I'll just put in these couple of parameters and, oh, look, I've got thousands of prospects. No, keep drilling down till you get your real um, real target and then, yeah. and then you can really personalize what you're going to say. But the other thing you said at the beginning, I think, comes into this is you love prospecting, right? So yeah. when you pick up the phone and you've done your work and you're talking to the right person and you're excited about telling how you can solve pain points and you know the work you've done and the people you've worked with, it's your enthusiasm is yeah. also a huge factor. Yeah, absolutely. And I think enthusiasm, passion, and confidence, yeah. people buy into that. And, and I genuinely am passionate and enthusiastic and confident because the way I look at it is, and this might sound arrogant, I don't want it to, but mm. I look at it as the, the, the recipient is lucky I chose them. Because I could, I could have chosen one of their competitors, but I yeah. chose them. And if they give me 15 seconds of their time to explain how I can make their life better, then, and as long as they're an intelligent human being and they, they give me that time, I know once I can explain how I can help them, there's an, app, there's an opportunity. I know it from the research I've done. And, and one thing that I do, John, to back this up is I make live calls to my delegates' prospects. Right. I, I remember last year there was a... I was speaking at a conference, about 350 tech entrepreneurs, and I made live calls to some of their dream prospects on a loudspeaker. And people <laughs> thought I was insane. But my attitude was, why? If I understood your proposition. I yeah. know what you're looking to achieve. And as long as I'm comfortable with that, I've got nothing to lose. And, and, and I never get that. To me, it's foreign that people are so worried and, and, you know, it, it goes back to what is the worst that will ever happen? They'll say, it's yeah. not for me. That, that really is the worst. Or they'll put the phone down, you yeah. know, when you really rationalize it. And as you said, um, what, all, what have they done in that case? All they've done is remove somebody from your list so that you can move on to somebody else, right? Correct. If they hang up on you or they say, not for me. But I think, uh, I think it's a really important point here because I could, I mean, I could play you some voicemails right now of people who left me prospecting, who left me prospecting messages. And in their voices, I don't feel yeah. like I hear that they love what they do, that they're confident yeah. in what they do. I, they sound to me like people who are, checking off okay well i call golden that's him yeah done. you know left him a message and, and i think people overlook that so i think obviously when you work with people i mean role playing is key right really Absolutely. having people get feedback and listen to themselves you know there was a study done many many years ago dr morabian and dr argo about communication and face to face it's 55 percent of communication is non-verbal but over the mm -hmm. phone they found it was 83 percent is how you sound and only 17% right. were the words. So I think it's such a big part. And the way I do it, the way I coach it, actually is twofold. The first thing I, I always say to my delegates is, where's the lesson? So if you get a successful phone call, I want you to understand why was it successful on that one compared to the 99 previous. And if you don't hit success, again, where's the lesson? What could you have tweaked to get a different outcome? So that's my first tip. And my second tip to always sound great on every call is this. And I call it the whale. And what I mean by the whale in my world is a company that invests 75 grand on training or speaking. Right. And I land two whales every year in my business. No, no, whatever marketing I do or don't do. But mm -hmm. the truth is, I never know when I'm going to get a whale. Right. So every phone call, genuinely, I treat my little brain, this is the big one. And often it isn't, right? I get two a year. But when I get the whale, I sound really good. And I mm -hmm. treat every call that they could be. Yeah, and I think that's another great point to underline because I think, I think too often, um, 
you know, were pretty dismissive and that, and you think, oh, well, it's, this isn't that great an opportunity anyway. And you don't know where it's yeah. going to lead to. And you don't know who that person talks to, or it turns right. out that it's just a small subsidiary of a massive company and you just blown an opportunity to get in. So, I mean, I think to your point is you should be equally enthusiastic about everybody you talk to. And, and obviously you're not going to feel like that all the time. So it's something that you have to deliberately focus on. It's exactly that. I, I've, I'm in my home office now, right? You mm-hmm. wouldn't tell with that background. <laughs> but I, and I, I'm surrounded by whales. I've got about, on my shelf in front of me, I've got about 16 whales, mostly that my, my gorgeous daughter Poppy has made mm-hmm. for me and drawn for me. But it's my daily visual reminder. So every prospecting call, I genuinely go through that routine. It's like my wake up of, Tony, get into your A game. And, and what I've noticed, I've run my business for 14 years and I've landed 32 whales. But interestingly, 26 of them were tadpoles. They knew the whale. And it's exactly, John, what you said. So the opportunity in front of me wasn't that big. But when I wowed them and delivered and exceeded their, exceeded their expectation, they introduced me to the Moby Dick. And, and that was, you know, that, and that to me reinforces this whole point. And I, I, I make it a daily habitual ritual. Yeah, and, and, I think it's, and I think it's so key that is, is because you just don't know who you're going to be talking to. But also for your own sanity, I mean, if you're, if you're just making constant like phone calls or Zoom meetings or sending out emails and, you, and your heart's not really in, I mean, that's kind of soul destroying. Why would you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to try yeah. it the other way? Correct. Absolutely. And it's, and I think that we need these strategies, right? Because, mm-hmm. and the other thing that I also think about, and I learned this when I sold software 22 years ago when I started selling, is understand the value of every call. So, you know, for your listeners, let's say their average commission check, argument take is $100. And right. they know it takes them 10 calls to do a sale. Every call is worth $10. So mm-hmm. if the first five say, I'm not interested, in their little head, they've just won 50 bucks. But most people don't look at it like that. So really start to understand the value of everything you do. And, and that's about knowing your numbers, right? Which we know in sales is sales 101. You've got to know your conversions because otherwise, how do you know what activity you've got to put at the yeah. top to get out of the bottom? Yeah. And, and going back to the personal responsibility thing, too, I mean, you have to set, uh, you know, not just wait for your your boss or whatever. You've got to set goals for yourself. I, I interviewed a guy a couple of years ago, actually, Kenton, a really cool guy. But he said on his prospecting, right, he said that he sets himself a goal of, you know, X amount of calls and he wants to get, you know, two, two meetings set up out of it. If yeah. he gets those two meetings set up out of it, he rewards himself with a movie that night. Right. No. Nice. However. If he if he does all those calls and he doesn't land those, but he has put a hundred percent into everything that day, then he gives himself a consolation prize of ice cream or something, whatever it is. Yeah. But the point is that he holds himself accountable, and at the end, and he doesn't end up on a day when he doesn't get some meetings. He doesn't end up beating himself up if he's done everything he could that day. I like that. I really like that. And I I always when I make a call, I'm always thinking of uh, apart from the whale. I'm thinking of the gap, the gap of the mm-hmm. call. And the G is the goal. And I always set two goals, actually. So in my line of work, my primary goal now is a Zoom appointment with a decision yep. maker or decision makers. If I don't achieve that, I've got a secondary goal, which is normally a mobile number, an alternative contact name. So I still feel like I'm getting something out of the call, unless obviously it's a, it's a voicemail. And my A is my approach. What's my approach going to be? And and the message that I get across, and I touched on this earlier, is don't talk about what you do. Talk about what you've done successfully with people or businesses like theirs. That's my whole concept. And then finally, the P is, am I prepared? Have I Mm -hmm. looked them up on Google? Have I gone on their LinkedIn profile? Have I, am I ready to name drop people in their space? Have I read their articles? Have I set up LinkedIn triggers or Google alerts? So I've got something to talk about to show that it's not a cold call. Mm -hmm. And if I've done that, I'm ready to smash it. 
Yeah, and I think that's and I think that's another great point as well. So, so I mean, maybe your call's only going to be five or ten minutes long, but the prep work behind it should be a lot more than that. You shouldn't be just uh, yeah. like winging it. And I think the prep work is is absolutely um, essential. And I think that thing we just said about that you have one outcome you're looking for, but you have a backup outcome. Because how many times do people go into calls with just one outcome in mind? And yeah, that yeah. might be great to be that single minded, but unfortunately um you know it doesn't always happen that way well even even worse than that john when i'm coaching i always say to a sales people you know, you know what's your objective of the call and they just say, oh, i just want to get hold of him and you know have a chat i say great and if you do get hold of him and have a chat what's the design outcome i don't know yeah, That's what you've exactly. got. if you don't know then he hasn't got a clue and I used to follow a, a late motivational speaker called Richard Denny. And he said, if you don't have a goal, you can't score. And I really like that. And every yeah, yeah. phone call should have an outcome. And it's not always to book an appointment. It might be to get feedback on a proposal, or it mm. might be to gauge what's the next steps and organize the third step in the, in the journey. So you've got to have a desired outcome that you're striving for because otherwise, you know, what, why are you picking up the phone? Yeah, and there's nothing worse than if you then you get somebody live and it's and then you're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what do I do now? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Really yeah. No, so this is this is great. Uh, this is great feedback for everybody. Great insight here. Um, and again, I mean, I think the other part too is is yeah, we're in a crisis right now. You know, a, a global global shared uh, crisis. And it's very easy to say, well, you know, my industry, the industry that I sell into is hurting, therefore people aren't going to want to talk to me. But in every situation, there are people who are doing well. You don't know for a fact the situation yeah. of different companies and different people. Yeah. So you shouldn't be using that as an excuse to hide behind. Absolutely not. And, and even if you are in an industry that really is struggling, there's still work to be done. Mm -hmm. Use this great opportunity, A, to invest in yourself and yep. develop yourself so that when things do change, and they will, you're ready to thrive. And secondly, use it as homework time. Find out, you know, who are the key decision makers or stakeholders in your, in your prospect list? Have you go out and get email addresses, phone numbers, start doing some research so that you're building up a wonderful list of prospects. So when maybe timing is a bit more on your side, then you phone them. But the truth is, I think people... Uh, uh, I'm not saying they're enjoying the time, but they are using it as a very easy excuse. And it goes back mm. to they don't like to do something they're not good at or they've never invested in themselves to get good at. Yeah. And ironically, um, uh, there's a lot of research to say that this is probably the best time to actually connect live with people. Because yeah, you're going to get older people. people. You're going to get a hold of people now. They said some, somebody told me this crazy statistic the other day that Verizon, one of the mobile carriers in the U.S., that they their biggest uh, day of the year is normally Mother's Day, right? That's when they do the biggest call volume, and they're exceeding that almost on a daily basis now. Really? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we I, I use different marketing channels, but I, I buy leads from email outreach that I do. But I also I have a VA in in the Philippines, and and she schedules fifty connections on sales navigator daily and i've written a sequence of emails and the whole objective is just to get a zoom appointment and then yeah. when i've got a zoom appointment or a telephone appointment then i do my work um and and i do i use bomb bomb to do video emails where i i hold up this plaque with their name on it so it say hi john you know and then my messaging is all about how i've helped someone like you and i'll be in touch and all i'm doing is i'm warming it up but ultimately, mm -hmm. I've still got to pick up the phone. And there's, there's so much chat online about cold calling is dead. And the only people who say that don't know how to do it. Yeah. Or they're, or they're inbound marketing companies. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Or both. And the last thing I just uh, touch on here is, is what you just touched on there is, um, is when you get on a Zoom call or whatever is turn your camera on, for goodness sake. Yeah, it does right. help, right? Yeah, even if the other, even if the prospect doesn't, at least turn yours on for the first couple of moments to just say, you know, hey, uh, hey, let's just put a face to the name here, Tony. Okay, Absolutely. this is me. Um, I'm going to switch my camera off now because I want to show you some stuff. But starting off with with that, putting a face to the name, and it's amazing how many people are 
you could no problem walking into a room full of people, but they don't want to switch Correct. their camera on. And, and and not only that, the two ba- well, the three basic things, and and you and I are both adhering to them is have a good background. You know, mm-hmm. how do you want to be represented as a bit as yeah. a business? Have a light on you so you're well lit, like you and mm-hmm. I are, and have some form of external mic or good sound, yeah. because otherwise it's going to be painful. And and these mm-hmm. aren't expensive things. You, you can spend you know whatever you wish to spend, but these are just basic things if you're going to be successful. Um, yeah. And what one thing to help your listeners, John, as you mentioned at the when you can't introduce me, I've written five books on sales, but when it comes to prospecting. My first book was Coffees for Closers. I published it eight years ago, and it was a it was an Amazon bestseller on, on telemarketing. So if any of your listeners want to email me on tony at tonymorrisinternational.com, I'll be delighted to give them a free copy of my ebook, Coffees for Closers. So uh, yeah, I'll do that as a gift for fantastic. your listeners, John. Yeah, that's very generous of you. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Pleasure. And I know there's a... I know a lot of people would take you up on that because, as I said, you know, you can never learn enough about prospecting. And if you get good at it, you know, you're going to stand out, to be honest. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, this is fantastic. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeline and CRM. Tony, thank you very much. All of Tony's information will be in his contributor bio below this video. But please uh, spend a couple of seconds to tell people a little bit more about yourself and your company. Thanks, John. Yeah, no, thank you for the opportunity. So I... I specialize in helping all sales organizations globally, uh, specifically manufacturing firms, wealth management, IFAs, real estate, and tech businesses. They're my four niches. uh, And I really help them prospect more effectively so that they get more appointments, convert those appointments into clients, and turn those clients into raving fans so that they, they recommend that their, their colleagues and peers for life. Um, and I do that for a variety of ways, Zoom train, virtual training, and then I have a platform called TMI University, which is a, an e-learning platform that has all of my content, you know, uh, that I've learned over the last 22 years. So yeah, I'd be yeah. delighted to talk to any of your listeners if they want to start selling more effectively. Yeah, it's fantastic. And thank you so much, Tony. Uh, Another great interview. I'll see you all for another interview very soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.